Hello friends, welcome to our channel Creating Essence. I am Megan. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I'm out in the backyard enjoying a balmy 45 degree day today. <laughs> I wanted to keep good to my word in my last video about Wellness Wednesdays and get back to Wellness Wednesdays. Last year we did set out some goals for 2018. Put a link to that in the info box below. But I did want to share with you all what I am planning, how I have revamped in the last two months on my wellness goals and my weight loss journey and strategies and things on how I plan to achieve those goals. For those of you who are new to our channel, I am a mama to six babies and I also have an autoimmune disease called chronic fatigue syndrome. I'll put a video to that in an iCard and in the info box below if you want to check it out. But all of that with the autoimmune stuff came to a really really big head in the summer of 2017 when I was working on losing my baby weight from number six who was born in the middle of 2016. I am one of those people who does not lose weight from breastfeeding. I have to eat the calories to make the calories so I kind of had to wait till he weaned to really work hard at it. And then the health things just exploded. So that really um, brought my work to a grinding halt. After my sixth was born, I had 100 pounds to lose. And I know <laughs> I always get these comments from people <laughs> when I make my Wellness Wednesday videos saying, oh, there's no way you have 100 pounds to lose. I'll tell you what, I am an apple shape. That means I have these thinly little skinny bony arms and my legs look like matchsticks, but I am round in the middle. I carry it all in my midsection, which they say is like the killer for heart disease. <laughs> While getting a handle on my autoimmune issues and slowly, painstakingly slowly working toward that goal, um, over the last year, I lost 30 pounds, and that is a great start, but I still have 70 pounds to lose. I am really working hard now that my autoimmune issues seem to be well in hand. I am really working at losing those last 70 pounds. I want to be healthy. And I don't want to be worried that one bad decision with my nutrition is going to send me into a flare. I need to get my body on a strong, even keel, which means at a good weight with good nutrition habits, not be living in fear that the next flare is one bite away. There's a lot of science that proves that fat, especially in your midsection, literally produces hormones and things that can disrupt your endocrine system. So getting the excess fat off the midsection is really important to me. I also, from those six incredible babies, have what's called a diastasis or diastasis recti, which is a split in the fascia that connects your abdominals. And I will put a video, I, I've done two videos now on that. I'll put them in the info box below in case you want to know more. More than half of all women who have had a baby have a diastasis. 80% of those people who have it have no idea because it's so not talked about. And people who are doing things to try to get rid of that baby pooch that won't go away are doing more harm than good because the standard things like crunches and planks and all sorts of stuff, it's actually making it worse and tearing your fascia more and weakening that. So just check out those links below. They, they will give you so much more information that I'm gonna get into here. But I have that. So that's something I need to be aware of with exercise and movement and things of that nature. 
So I'm working with a lot of things, but I'm not using it as an excuse because I have a fantastic exercise program that is diastasis aware called fit to be. I'll put a link to that below. No, it's nothing that makes me money. It's not like beach body or anything. Like I don't get money from recruiting people. I don't nothing. It's just an excellent, well-made exercise program that is live streaming online. And I get it through Roku most often because it's just easier and it's diastasis aware. They have over 200 workouts of all different kinds, everything from like postpartum recovery no, and surgery recovery and things like that, all the way through high intensity cardio and uh, weightlifting and things like that. So it's really, really all inclusive and high quality. So that's what I use for exercise. I also have what most people would consider a really clean diet already. We eat mostly paleo, but it could be better. The thing that I have found and having um, the autoimmune issues has shown me is that as much as my diet is super healthy compared to literally 90% of the population, it's still not healthy enough for my body. My body does really well on mostly plant-based with some meat thrown in. We aim for most of our meals to be a meat or a good hearty protein source like eggs or beans and two vegetables or a vegetable and a fruit. My strategies for losing these last 70 pounds are food journaling. I always do better with my nutrition when I'm actually writing it down. I don't take those absent-minded bites when I'm getting the kids a snack and because those things add up. I mean, my kids snack on healthy things like apples and raw cashews and things like that. But a quarter cup of cashews is significant. So if I eat like an eighth of a cup while I'm just dishing out, you know, five little bowls of raw cashews, I, I've had like a whole serving when I'm not even hungry. I just like cashews, so I was popping them while I'm getting out a snack, things like that. So I'm food journaling and keeping track of that. I am purposefully doing smaller portions because I am living proof my weight is evidence that you can get overweight on really healthy food because too much is still too much and yes it's harder to get to be too much when you're eating a salad but it's still too much. It's still more than your body needs. And if I'm stretching my stomach out with tons of vegetables, even though though they're low calorie, then the next meal that may not be as low calorie, my stomach is still big enough that it, it still wants to be satiated. And if I've stretched it out with really low calorie, healthy steamed or raw veggies, the next meal it wants to be filled <laughs> with things that uh, count a lot higher for lack of a better way of putting it. So I'm doing purposely smaller portions. I'm not starving myself by any means. Um, one thing that I have noticed is as a mom, that absent-minded snacking I was talking about often means I'm not actually hungry at mealtime. So I'm really trying to notice when it's coming around to mealtime, am I hungry? And if I am, great. And if I'm not, I'll drink a glass of water and wait, <laughs> feed the kids and make myself a plate so that when I do get hungry, I eat that. Things like that. I'm just trying to be really intentional and conscious of that. Now it is winter time right now. Um, I eat a lot less in the winter time already because I'm a lot less physically active. In the summertime, we are so crazy busy with the homesteading things, with the gardening and the animals and the yard work and taking care of everything around us, taking care of the kids. So I'm getting a lot more physical activity. So I do tend to eat more in the summertime, but I'm just being really aware of being truly hungry at mealtime. And I know that sounds basic and crazy, but for me, that's a thing. I've done videos in the past, especially in my chronic fatigue video, I showed you all the plethora of uh, supplements I take. I have cut that back and my body's doing really well. Now I am just taking a probiotic and a methylated folate. 
so a B12, 10,000 IUs of a chewable every morning. Those are the only supplements I'm taking. I'm working on exercise. I want to exercise at least three days a week. And Sundays, we are getting, my husband and I are getting back into our Sunday gym date. Um, if you were on our live stream last month, you know that Josh hurt himself really bad. Dislocated his shoulder terribly and really damaged his arm and shoulder. So we haven't been doing our Sunday gym dates, but he's getting to the point now where his arm doesn't hurt with the jarring. We find out in a couple weeks if he needs surgery. Right now, the jarring is not hurting his arm, so we're gonna start doing our Sunday gym dates again and just doing cardio. When we used to go, he would do his weightlifting and a little bit of cardio, and I would just do my cardio that way. So, getting back into Sunday gym dates, and I'm just being intentional, intentional about getting at least three days a week of fit to be done at home. For me, most of the time that looks like after the kids are in bed. I used to get up first thing in the morning at like 5, 5.30 and exercise then. And one thing chronic fatigue has taught me is that I need sleep. And as long as my body will sleep, I need to let it. So I've stopped setting my alarm. I sleep until I wake up. And if the kids are already awake, the kids are already awake. And if they're getting up in a few minutes, they're getting up in a few minutes and I don't have time to exercise. And that's okay because I need to sleep. So most of the time lately, my exercise happens when I tuck the kids in at eight and then I do things like get in a load of laundry, get the dishwasher going, drink a glass of water, and then do anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes of exercise in the living room. When it's clear, there's no kids getting underfoot, needing my attention. And then I still have showered and I'm done by nine o'clock at the latest. And if I wanna go to bed then, I can go to bed or I can stay up and finish things, but that has become how it has to happen for me here. I have also set up kind of a little reward system for myself in two different ways. One, I joined what's called a diet bet. No, this is not sponsored. <laughs> uh, diet bet is just, I'll link it below. You can look at it and see what it is, but I joined a transformer, which is six months long. You pay in a small amount of money and then each month they give you a day to weigh in and you take a picture of the scale with the keyword for that day and it's like a full length picture with the mirror so they know it's you and they know it's you weighing in. There are many goals each month but by the end you have to have lost 10% of your body weight. I'm going for significantly more than that uh, over the course of the next year and 10% in six months should be very easy for me. 10% is about a healthy uh, level of weight loss for me, 10% would be about three months. So that is motivation because when it gets to June, I should be winning some money. So that's motivation. <laughs> also, I have a little mini goal system set up for rewards for myself. The big reward is a new wardrobe but not just any wardrobe. It is one that I have sewn myself. If you don't know, I'm almost six feet tall. I also, like I said, I'm an apple shape. So a lot of straight off the rack clothing does not fit me well. It's too short. It's kind of cut wrong. It doesn't hit me in the right places, but I am a professional seamstress and I have never sewn clothes for myself. I have set up some mini milestones and set up a Pinterest board of patterns that I like and fabrics that I like to, when I reach these mini goals, reward myself with this pattern that I really like and this pattern that I really like. And then when I get to this way, something that's like closer to what will be my size when I'm at the end, um, fabrics and things and like new wardrobe pieces for myself. I am going to need a totally new wardrobe when I'm done with this weight loss journey, so that's one way of doing it. I'm really excited about that. If you'd like to follow my Pinterest board, I'll link it below. Let me know if you have any health goals for this year. I would love to hear and I would love to support. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more like this. Bye friends.